This YCN segment is brought to you by LaValle Building Supply and Middleton Building Supply. Family on three! One, two, three, family! You are the white! See, boy? This out-of-division contest was already the second time the Rebels and Wasps have faced off this season. Back on September 20th, Woodstock lost 2-3 on the road. So now at home, the Wasps hope to take some revenge. The game began with early offensive pressure from the hosts, as seniors like Isaac Emery and Emilio Montano had some close scoring opportunities. However, defense ruled much of the contest in the midfield. Both squads had trouble advancing the ball during the majority of the first half. When called upon, Leland and Gray's goalie Cameron Anderberg and Woodstock's goalie Steven Bianchi stepped up to make the necessary saves. It was around the 22nd minute though when the Rebels took the lead. Their forward, Rain Holmes, made a perfect pass through a couple of defenders, right to fellow forward Jordan Pearson. Jordan forced Bianchi to come out of the net, and Pearson made the easy kick to the right of the diving goalie. Leland and Gray was up 1-0. Woodstock did what they could to tie things up before the break, with guys like Taylor Ploward getting in on the action. Montano and Emery also continued to put pressure on the Rebels' defense. But Leland and Gray's backs like Ethan Cutts, Jaden Bloom, and Lucas Newton rejected any real threats from the Wasps. At halftime, the score remained 1-0 with the Rebels on top. To begin the second half, it only took Woodstock two minutes to tie things up after Isaac Emery assisted sophomore Tom Basilian right in front of the net. Just a few minutes later, Montano and Basilian nearly combined for the go-ahead score, but Rebels goalie Anderberg was there to make the save. Before the game was over, Anderberg again and again played a crucial role in Leland and Gray's defense with big stops in net. Just when it seemed like an extra period would be needed, Rebels' Jaden Bloom created space for himself with 10 minutes to go near the left sideline, and he perfectly assisted Riley Barton with a high kick. Riley finished with a great header putting the ball in the left of the net. This score would be the game-winning goal, as Leland and Gray went on to win with a final 2-1 score. After the contest, we spoke with both head coach Avellino and head coach Barton, as well as Rebels back Lucas Newton, to hear what they had to say about the matchup. Well, first of all, we had a, a formidable opponent in Leland and Gray. We knew how good they were, and we certainly can compete with the good teams, we feel like that. We know they're, they're highly skilled. Uh, we know they're very quick up front. Uh, but we also like our defense, too, in terms of being able to combat that. Um, I thought we did a good job of that today. We certainly had a lot of chances. We didn't finish on our chances today, and I think that cost us in the long run. Uh, but I, I told my guys keep their heads up. I thought they played really well, held their own well against them. And hopefully we can improve from this. You know, a lot of times we give out game pops. We call it game pops for guys that played really well. We had a list of guys that started on the defense, and we thought Blake uh, Heston played really well from the defensive end. We thought Mason Harkins played really well from the defensive back. Also, um, Andrew Gubbins was our uh, defensive center mid. We thought he, he would deserve one. Our goalie, Stevie Bianchi, played extremely well, too, so we were really happy with him. And Tommy Vasilian got his first um, goal playing for Woodstock. Um, we thought he played outstanding today, too. He does a lot of little things well. Well, I think we had really good composure, and I think we had great communication on defense. We kept them in front of us. They're very fast and physical and strong up top, but we did a good job of keeping our men behind them, which was the key. And then when we had the chances to score goals, we put them in the goal. I mean, we didn't have a lot of chances. They probably had more chances than us, but we capitalized on our finishing. So. And our goalkeeping was fantastic. I thought Cameron Anderberg in the net, Lucas Newton in the center back, not only played well, but he communicated well. And then Jaden Bloom and Riley Barton on that last goal. That was a nice pass and nice finish. It's a big win, especially on the road. They're a fantastic team. We have a lot of respect for them. We usually don't have much luck against them until this year. So it's nice to pull that out. And it's if that doesn't give us confidence, I don't know what will. Going into this game in our uh, last practices, we were really focusing on the set plays. 
We were focusing on communicating in the back because we know one of this team's strengths is off their set plays, they're in the air. They got some big bodies. On offense, we want to play fast, quick passes, do our best to pick them apart. Today, not a ton of opportunities, but we took advantage when we could. Our goalie, Cameron, he played great. Good communication, not much more you can ask for. I mean, we've lost a couple players this season. Everybody on the bench, we're deep. People are helping out. Jaden Bloom, center back, providing consistent, great marking, good in the air. Riley Barton, obviously that great header goal in the end. Uh, I'm sure he's leading us in goals this year. He's playing awesome. I don't think we even see the divisions that much. Basically, we're just going into every game, focusing on ourselves, knowing what we can do. Play our game, have fun, not worry too much about what we're coming up against because we know what we're capable of, and uh, that's just the mentality every time. Leland and Gray improves to an impressive 7-0 in Division 3, while Woodstock falls to 4-3-1 in Division 2. The Wasps next play host to the Slaters from Fairhaven while the Rebels next host the Minutemen from Mill River. Yeah. 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 Yeah.